Welcome back and let's get into our news review segment. The Finder newspaper says 611,392 formal sector uh, jobs created. Some 267,939 uh, created by former private uh, sector employers and some 8,339,000 uh, unemployed. 1.1 million working as volunteers. Nanado Katz sword for 70 million phase two Tamale airport project. Brian the Champion Foundation gives 70 co-teachers some uh, 208 million cities in excess of that scholarship. Government uh, clears 198.2 million uh, nurses allowance. Government pays 3.1 billion to pension schemes. That's what the finder reports this morning. The Daily Guide, uh, the Daily Statement, I beg your pardon. I know about NAB. Bulsa Honest Akufuado. NDC's hypocrisy is in power sector exposed. Unemployment rate plummets as uh, Labour Minister cites free SHS as a contributory factor. The Daily Graphic. Rate of police contract appointments worrying. Third year SHS students return August 19. Election of MMDCs. EC sets referendum for uh, December 17. Protect airport lands. President charges authorities. The publisher, Akufuado cut sword for Tamale Airport project. I won't resign. CID boss fires back. Campaign and die. Atibubu traditional council tells NDC MP. And GS suspends insurance scheme. Sir John to boot out Freddie Blay. That's a question uh, being asked by the publisher. The Herald newspaper, Akufuado hides PDS report from Qatar. Anger brewing in MPP over Blay buses as 5.2 million US dollars loan facility hits ruling party. Hajia Fatih links missing auction to chief of staff. The Scatholic Standard. Evils of Africa from wrong choices and taxes to be paid via mobile money. That's according to the GRA boss, uh, Maro Kofinti. The informer, danger as students drink from polluted dam. Government spearheads construction of $100 million uh, cathedral. As corruption continues to fester on Akufuado, chiefs urge Ghanaians to speak up. And of meager 140 Ghana cities, Alawa and poor quality food served at workshop. Hungry teachers angry with Napo. The Ghanaian Times, tier two pensions, government pays 3.1 billion uh, cities to pension schemes. Investigate MIDA, IFC over PDS saga, CSOs call on government to do so. GJ marks 70th anniversary in Accra and support security agencies to curb fertilizer smuggling. The Daily Guide, NDC chokes on free SHS, DNA samples taken from Tadi families, and Nanakat sought for 70 million Tamale Airport terminal. Government pays 3.1 billion into pension accounts. The Daily Heritage, trouble looms for SHS students as Tewu demand 50-50 share of incentives of non-teaching students staff and warns education authorities over imposition of SIC policy. Reduce politics into tax education, Chiari Commissioner to media and rise above pressure. Uh, Kwabena Japan advises you. Finally, the Inquisitor. Red alert. Ghana hotel security terrible. And chief demands removal of Zusalana. And uh, get fund sets up monitoring team. That's what we are told uh, in these ones. And uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmed Jinapo is a senior lecturer at the University of uh, Education, Winnebago. Good morning. Welcome. How are you doing, sir? Mr. Richard Ahiagba is also a deputy communications director of the ruling NPP. Uh, Rich, welcome. How are you doing? Great. Well. And we'll be joined shortly by lawyer Abraham Amaleba, and uh, he will he will join us shortly. But first, let's take a look at the uh, what the CID boss has been saying. Uh, she said she won't resign, uh, but take a listen. Resigning is like resigning from the Ghana Police Service. So the position is not something that I can. I have to resign and say I am no longer a Director General CID. It is appointment. It's like posting, transfer. So I have to be transferred. She I don't need to resign. Resigning is like resigning from the Ghana Police Service. So the position is not something that I can. I have to resign and say I am no longer a Director General CID. It is appointment, it's like posting, transfer. So I have to be transferred.
Welcome back. The conversation has started already. Laura Abraham Amaliba is here with us. He's a member of the NDC's legal team and also a member of the communication team. Gentlemen, welcome. How are you doing? Very well. How's your Friday so far? Um, it's been terrible, the situation. <laughs> the day just begun. The, How is your day terrible? Oh, it's a flow from yesterday to mm. today. We think that this is an economy that is excruciating. So. People this morning may not be able to buy cocoa, and so I don't think that the money is a good one. <laughs> it's not a good one. Doc is laughing at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Richard, yeah. He, he says that early morning like this and the day is bad already for him. Yeah. You can't expect any different from uh, uh, Mr. Malaba mm -hmm. and the NDC. But uh, what I know that uh, the day is good. Mm. It was good yesterday, uh, since he said uh, his is flowing from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday mm -hmm. I joined uh, the people of the Volta region, specifically mm. the Keta municipality, okay. uh, with uh, Togwisri the third, and uh, Jufia of uh, Kaji, to mm. welcome uh, and introduce the port director for Keta, mm. uh, an event that opened the door for the commencement of work on the much talked about Qatar uh, mm. port. And it was a moment to behold, uh, Johnny. So I am encouraged. Mm. I am excited about the future. Okay. Uh, and I want to just say, uh, since Amalaba started doing politics this morning, I want to say in support that we should be wary of politicians who can bury no ideas. Okay. Uh, that the MPP has come with good ideas to move this country forward. And that excites me a great deal. If I weren't mm. an MPP <coughs> member, I would be equally excited. So I encourage everyone okay. to see the moment ahead of us with hope mm. and optimism that Ghana is going places. Great. The CID boss says I won't resign. And we had, a, she said uh, resigning from, from a position would be equal to uh, leaving the police service in, in, in total. And, but there have been calls for, for her to go because particularly of the three Takradi girls, and the fact that her, her statements from back in the day, we know where they are, we have found them, we reunite them with their families and all of that. Lord Malba, what, what do you think? Uh, she, she spoke truth, didn't she? Let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. I think the CID boss, who is a good friend of mine, is missing the point. The point is that the people of this country have entrusted you with a job. Um, the people of this country think that in recent times, and not when you joined the uh, police force, mm. you might have joined the police force for about 10 years now, or 15 years. In all those years, nobody asked you to resign. Mm. But you have been entrusted with a responsibility. Mm. And the people of this country think that in recent times, your conduct, your ability to continue in the position mm -hmm. is being questioned. And they are asking that the job we give you, you've not discharged your mm -hmm. responsibilities to their expectation. Okay. And so it is based on that, that there are calls on her to resign. Mm -hmm. It is not because they hate her, it's not because of her person, Okay. It's because of a certain job that has been entrusted in your care. Mm. And <coughs> after evaluation, having occupied that position, they are of the view that you've not discharged to their satisfaction. Mm. And so that's how they, these calls are coming in. Okay. So that's the way she should look at it and not to make it look like the, the people who are calling for a resignation are targeting her as a person. Mm. It is about an evaluation of a job that has been given to her. And in recent time, it has to do with this um, the missing girls, mm. three missing girls. And we all agree, I think she herself would admit that in respect to that, mm. she's not handled that, that uh, matter very well. She, she will admit to it. Mm. Is that enough for us to be calling for her dismissal, uh, her resignation? <coughs> I don't know. Mm. But I think that the calls that are coming for her resignation is based or on her handling of the missing Takradi girls. Mm. And that is what she should look at. Right. Yes. She should be looking at. R Richard, yeah. 
well, finally, she's spoken after the long silence. Um, what do you What do you say? Is, is her call, uh, her response, well placed? Yeah. Uh, um uh, good morning. I suppose uh, we got ahead of ourselves earlier. Uh, to yourself, uh, to the viewing public, uh, to the vice president and the president who are out there touring and working to serve Ghana. Mm. Uh, I think the, uh, the CID boss uh, has a set of uh, tasks that uh, she was given to perform for the people of Ghana. Mm. And I think she's doing that. Uh, historically, we know, and even in the, in the most advanced places mm -hmm. uh, on this earth, uh, intelligence and the business of investigation is a very laborious, is a very involving, is a tedious, mm. it is often misunderstood uh, piece of work. And so I think she's doing the best she can, humanly mm. possible under the circumstances. So I would say, uh, insofar as she's not done anything so flagrant that all of us will uh, be appalled by it and say, mm. this is against the basis for which we put you there. I think she should soldier on and do what she can to ensure that the job assigned to her, she, she's doing it to the best of her ability and to continue to serve the people. Good people Has she that. proven that yet? Uh, well, unless there's a measure given, uh, I don't think we In can... In the matter of the three tacticals. That, is, that cannot be a basis. Yeah. Uh, but we have seen uh, people run this, uh, this economy into the ground, handed it over to IMF. Nobody asked them to resign. And even if, if anybody asked them to resign, they didn't. That is more egregious than trying to investigate something which is driven by intelligence. Mm. Something that is not by magical powers. It is by collecting information, acting on those information to provide a solution. She doesn't have any divining powers. She is human. Mm -hmm. She has a set of skills. She has an institution to do the work. That is what we're, we're supporting her to do. Mm -hmm. So if other people who are asking for this and perhaps pushing, do this, do that, they <coughs> themselves have led this country. Mm -hmm. They themselves were given some uh, positions or responsibilities. The question is, ask yourself if you have been perfect in a discharge of yours, mm. in, given human limitations, given mm. the fact that what you are doing depends on another person doing this uh, the best they can. So really, the question now should not be talking about resign or not resign. The question should be, how do we? Okay. get a job done because yeah. at the end of the day we're not interested if anybody resigns today how does that help us get the girls <clears throat> back the commitment we must have is that how do we do the job so that there's our children who are not with us okay. come home mm. that's what i think the uh, the cid boss is committed to and that's why she wants to stay to help us resolve that issue doc, doc is the cid boss being pushed so hard uh, out of office well let me say good morning to your cherished viewers and to my Two brothers. I think uh, I'm a little bit biased when it comes to uh, the CID boss because uh, I happen to have known her some time back when she was at Winneba. Uh, she was the commandant of mm. the, the police training the college. School. And mm. the time that I saw, I saw her to be a very, very promising individual. And I'm not surprised she's where she is. But I think, uh, uh, Johnny, mm. we need to make a distinction Tell me. between two things in terms of one, performance at your work and two how people see you in terms of how you are doing your work mm. when it comes to investigation even though she's the cid boss but we all know that she's not the one who is directly responsible for what for investigating mm. his whole mm. uh, thing that's very awesome mm. but he is being picked as an individual uh, more or less, uh, I mean, as a personification of this whole Takura mm. Saga mm. because of one or two things. His public utterances. Okay. His public utterances. The call for his resi her resignation is not necessarily about her inability to get the kidnapped girls, mm. but the most important statement that she made that we know where they are mm. and we are getting them. And I even think that she's not even doing herself a good service by even continually what speaking to the public. 
Why, because, why not? You no, know, let me give you a typical example. I mean, the reason she gave for her now resignation, for me, uh, is, uh, excuse me to say, uninformed. What is she saying? The, the, she said that, uh, let me read a quote that okay. she, she gave very quickly, that my position is not a position that I applied for. Mm. I don't need to resign. Resigning is like resigning from the Ghana Police Service. Mm. And the position is not something I applied for. When the time comes for me to be transferred, I'll be transferred. If you resign from the position as mm. CID mm. director, it doesn't mean you're resigning from the Ghana Police Service. It doesn't mean that. Mm. So, the premise mm. upon which she's even making that argument, I think, is false. It means that she could be reassigned. No, she could be reassigned. Mm. Look, she's a top police officer, COP, uh, speaks to the IGP. I've had a lot of luck in terms of where I am. It's not as if I'm not doing what I'm doing, but I think that my stay in this office, one way or the other, will not inure to what? Uplifting mm. the confidence mm. that the general public have in me mm. and in the CID office. So I wish to be transferred. Is there anything wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Even though I'm not suggesting mm. that is what she should do. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is that when statements of this sort are made, then it goes to inform the, 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 the lack of confidence that the public have in her mm. in terms of her performance. Because as I said, it's not just about her performance relative to investigation, but the utterances that she makes in okay. public. Mm. And how people see it. How people see it and how work. people interpret it. Mm. Because I don't know they look, let's face it. Uh, I mean, Johnny, the CID boss is a polarizing figure. There's no doubt about it. Mm. And I don't think her polarization is probably as a result of uh, her actions or as a result of her, her duties that have been discharged, but probably she could be a victim of circumstance. Why am right. I saying this? Mm. Before the coming into being of uh, this current administration, did you know about Tiwa Adudankwa No. No, it's not Adudankwa. Uh, uh, Adudankwa. 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 Yeah. Uh, Tiwa Adudankwa. Did you know about her? Mm. Probably not. She was a very quiet, hard-working woman, as I said. She happened to be the commandant at, uh, what did they call Winneba. it? Winneba. Mm. And she brought a lot of innovative uh, uh, ideas. Uh, ideas. Mm. Then she's promoted to the position of what? DCOP. Then she's promoted again to the position of what? COP. COP. Probably she was competent. Mm. She was competent. And if you remember the investigation that she had with A plus and all those things, mm -hmm. people started forming this kind of what? Biasness about what? About her. Mm. So I would I would I would I would humbly recommend that okay. if it is in her interest mm. that her being transferred, okay. not necessarily resigning. Right. Have been transferred from that office because she's she's capable. She's a general police officer. She's not a detective, so to speak. She's a general police officer, mm -hmm. and she can go to any other position. If her movement from that office to another office will more or less ignite the confidence that the general public have in the police service, especially the CID, I think is the best way to go. Okay, let's go to uh, the Western Region shortly. We're told the car power ship is arriving, and uh, Eric J is there. When we come back, there's a former superintendent of police who's been speaking about uh, contract for senior police officers but let's let's hit the uh, western region now and Eric Yaweje will will be on your screens shortly you remember that we're told that the car power ship is moving to the western region and uh, that it would it would be an improvement on our power supply will not affect it adversely well Eric Yaweje is on the ground now and uh, he shares uh, what he finds there that is being operated by car power ship Ghana Limited was just ushered into its new location. And if you are aware, the car ship set sail to Sekendi yesterday from the Tema Fishing Harbor. And we are learning that it got to its final place here in Sekendi at about 9.30 p.m. yesterday evening. Now, as you may have heard, this relocation we are told it's in line with government strategic policy for the car power ship to utilize natural gas from the western enclave. Now, a 10-kilometer gas pipeline has been prepared, and this pipeline is going to convey gas from the metering station, the regulating and metering station at Intraben that belongs to the Ghana Gas Company Limited, and that will power the car power ship. That facility is ready. And seven kilometers of that facility, that gas pipeline is onshore with the remaining 
three kilometers offshore from the Indonesian fishing community to the naval base. Again, power line that will transmit the power from the car power ship has also been prepared. And as you can see in your shot, the, the, the car power ship is nearing its betting location and there's a gas collector that has been completed. You can see a lot of people around ushering the power ship to its final place. And per a statement from car power ship, we are learning that in the next 17 days, this will be connected to the national grid to continue giving us power. So you can see some men running in your shot, trying to get their ship to its final destination. So in your shot is the Cardinal's power ship Osman Khan here at the Sekindi Neva base and Welcome back. So now you know the car power ship is, uh, has arrived and uh, in the next 17 days we're told that well there will be some level of improvement. We will be saving ourselves some money. We'll get into that um, if, if we have a bit of time. But they, let's dovetail the conversation about the CID boss into uh, what a retired police officer, former superintendent, uh, Mr. Paul Avui, has been saying. He says he's concerned about the increasing trend of offering contract appointment to senior officers who are due for retirement in the Ghana Police Service. He would go on to mention uh, section uh, 1153 of, of, a, of the law, the Police Service Regulations uh, 2012, a constitutional instrument, CI 76, that... The law states clearly that where the exigencies of the service required of an officer uh, re who retires from the service on attaining 60 years of age may be reappointed on a limited engagement on terms and conditions that the appointing authority shall determine for a period not exceeding two years at a time and not exceeding five years in total. Subsection 4 also states that in spite of subregulation 3, only the appointed authority shall determine the recommendation to engage an officer for a limited period. But he's alleging that um, the practice now is where people attain 60, and even though there are people within the service who can equally perform the role that they are retiring from, they still will apply for uh, an extension, and it's become a more like a pick and choose uh, situation where people are 60, they apply for it, and the ripple effect is that it affects the uh, the morale and the confidence of junior officers who could have otherwise been, you know, appointed into those roles. Council, what, what do you say to this one? Uh, this is a former policeman who's saying that this is not good for us. It's not good for our security uh, structure, and if we don't take care, it will blow up in our faces one day. I think the provision that you read. Mm -hmm. It's a provision that was put in to retain people with specialized skills. Right. That's true. It's a provision that would allow you to retain somebody because of a certain skill or knowledge which is not readily available. Mm -hmm. But it appears the concern that is being raised now is that this provision is being abused mm -hmm. and is so rampant to the extent that IGPs, the deputy IGP now, mm -hmm. or the device, or deputy? Deputy IGP. Deputy IGP now. Acting IGP. Acting course. IGP now. It's also on contract. So when the former IGP was there on contract, mm. you have the um, current one too mm. on, also on contract. Right. Now, this does not engender confidence and the desire to aspire to greater heights. Mm. Because if you join every organization, the ultimate is to get to the top. Mm. And as you work hard to get to the top, you find that these contract workers are occupying those places. Mm. Then also, it brings about a choke mm. of a number of officers who otherwise would have been promoted mm on standby 
when are you ever going to release them, uh, uh, release in terms of uh, clearing those who are on contract and then begin to fix them at their rightful places? Mm. So, apart from it being demoralizing to men and officers who otherwise would have been promoted, but they are not promoted, mm. loyalty is also questionable mm. because I know that in the police service, people are grumbling. I have spoken to a number of policemen. They are grumbling. What about? About, they are grumbling about the fact that you have a lot of officers who are on standstill and they are not being promoted. Mm. They, are, they, are, they are worried about the lack of promotion. They are stuck at one place. They are stuck at position. one place. So okay. it's worrying to them. Recently, somebody wrote a piece describing the former IGP who just uh, mm. went home mm. as a civilian in police uniform. That's unfair. <laughs> but this is to tell you the resentment in the service. It's, mm. it's an epitome of the resentment. So I think this is becoming rampant under this administration. Mm. And that is why the calls are now coming that uh, we need to tread cautiously, we need to ensure that mm. we do not abuse the rules. Mm. And the rules are there not for the president or whoever is the appointing authority mm. to abuse them, but to guide them in administering the police service properly. Mm. In this way, as we are seeing it now, I think that what is happening is a great disservice to the Ghana police service. The consequence? The consequences are what I'm telling you. Um, morale will be low, the police force, and currently you see how our police force is politically uh, 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 tainted. People don't have confidence in, in, the, in the police service. When you say, let's refer a matter to the CID for investigation, say, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we don't think there will be clearance. Uh, uh, no thorough work will be done. Recently, there was the clearance of the, uh, what's your man's name? Uh, 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 your man at the, at the, at the Julie House, um, uh, Bisu. Mm. And this clearance, you realize that there were a lot of question marks. First and foremost, this matter was before the special prosecutor, mm. who was seized with the authority to deal with the matter. All documents, evidence, mm. were placed before the special prosecutor. You notice that the special prosecutor himself came out to speak against what the CID did. So, all these things are as a result of the way this current administration mm. is handling the police force. And I think that we we'll need to do a lot mm. when the NDC comes in 2021 to clear that mess at the police headquarters and the police... But Richard, the, the report says currently, apart from the three senior officers on contract, about six more in the rank of... Uh, commissioners have applied to be given contracts uh, the daily graphic has gathered so that brings to the number nine if if it goes through but uh, superintendent Ayuvi says this is illegal because the caveat is that the officers who will be giving contracts must have special you know skills that nobody else has and they also mentioned he also went on in a story to mention uh, a series of IGPs who were appointed over their juniors who were appointed over their seniors because their seniors at some point were blocked, contracts were given ahead, so they keep you at one place until you retire and then your juniors are promoted against you. What, what do you say to this? You are in government. Uh, shall we sit and stare while this happens? Well, Johnny, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm a bit reluctant to talk about this uh, because the position of the law is clear. Uh, I am just a bit disappointed in my uh, brother here, uh, uh, who is a lawyer, uh, appearing not to be loyal to the law. Uh, if the law states something, uh, then that's what the law says. Mm -hmm. So the prerogative of the appointing authority to utilize the law to effect cannot be questioned. Now. If you are commenting about this, then really I think that we are drawing the police into a space that we shouldn't be drawing them into. Which space is that? Uh, that space is the politicization of the police service. Mm. We've talked about this severally. 
Now, if for some reason uh, people are given contract, the understanding uh, by default is that they have certain uh, tendencies that are needed and skills that the appointing authority sees useful mm -hmm. to advance the cause of the police service. Now, I, I reject the notion that uh, you join the police because you want to become an IGP. Is that the thinking? Everybody wants to. But, no, please, I'm not about allow me. I'm not about allowing him. I'm not about allowing him. I'm not about allowing him. Once allow him. you join an institution, you hope to rise to the top. I'm not about allowing him. If you Richard, don't have, I'm not about, if please. you don't have uh, ambition, I'm not about. You, you don't have ambition. I'm not about, please. <laughs> Okay, Richard. So, sorry about that. so the truth of the matter is that the notion mm -hmm. that you are, you join the police service because you want to become an IGP, if that's what every police officer has, then I'm, I'm afraid we're in the wrong. They're in the wrong business. But but that that, that is not wrong. Take, that's that's wrong. not what no, I said. No, hold no, on. No, 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 hold I'm, on, not, hold I'm on. not talking about you. I'm saying hold my on. own submission. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you so mentioned please, my name. I didn't mention your submission. No, no, no. Okay, sorry. So please please control yourself, please. Richard, the point I am making here is this that you join a service out of your commitment to serve, it is not to become IGP. And then, now we can and, take and our then you get reward, reward in the end? If, if that comes inevitably, yes. And, but then you know that you don't become an IGP because you, have, be, uh, you become a police officer. It is by virtue of your service and an appointing authority that mm. finds you uh, capable mm. to do certain things. So it is by appointment. It's mm. not by graduation or it's not by anything. Mm. See? So if you don't get it, that should be a basis let, for let, us let's, to, let's, to not let's, have a conversation. Let's come back and not talk about appointment. Let's talk up now about the three officers who are on contract yeah. and the six more who are due for retirement shortly who have applied yeah. for an extension. Yeah. What do you say to that? There's nothing I can say, uh, Johnny, because that's the position of the law. Mm. If the appointing authority so finds that these people have, or more or less, merit the granting of that contract, so be it. That is the law. Mm. We, so, the law was collectively written. So, Superintendent so, uh, Akui said, for yeah. example, that uh, senior officers are appointed in consultation with the Council of State. Yes, yes. Um, per the recommendation mm. of the police council. Yeah. And he says that the council of state itself, by its composition, and we all know how sometimes they are politicized, he says that brings about a certain pick and choose, which is also not good. You see, Do you agree? I, you see, Johnny, we need, we need, see, these discussions, we need to remove emotion because these are positions of law. We cannot eat our the, cake. The officer and, has emotion? Yes, of, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about him, but I'm saying that we cannot want to eat our cake and have it too. Okay. Mm. So if the law says, okay, this prerogative exists for an appointing authority, mm. it may be Nanado Danko Kufuado, it may be tomorrow uh, another president, it may be tomorrow another president. That position does not change. Okay, that position mm -hmm. is permanent. Mm -hmm. Now, if all of us accept that we're going to go the way of law, then let's not use emotion to try to undermine the law. What is happening, if they have any concern about it, that concern would be to appeal to try to undo the law. Since 2012, so it's been happening. Oh, no, please. Yes, it can happen because mm -hmm. the law exists for it to happen. Mm -hmm. The law has not changed. If the law changes, then we can argue that. But the law hasn't changed, so what are we trying to argue? They, are we they, trying to they, say the they, law is not they, good they enough? Chief, the chief superintendent says since 2012, yeah. we gave unto ourselves this law yeah. to uh, re-engage specialized police officers. Very well, yes. But since 2012, that has not been the norm. People who have a general skill that everybody else has apply and are retained. It is not for them to apply. Yeah. It is for a committee to say, <coughs> we can't let you go because you have A, B, C, and D. Okay. But now what has become is that they apply uh -huh. and seeking to suggest that I have a skill that you haven't recognized yet. Okay. And that, that's what I'm asking. Yes, so Jenny, if, if, if you tell me that you have a skill that uh, you know your employers haven't recognized, it is appeal you are making to them to recognize. But, you have but, to. But, but if I've worked here for thirty years, yes, and I have a skill, wouldn't you know? Well, well that in is, a that, certain capacity. Yes, but then maybe maybe people have decided not to know. But you make the appeal, then they take a look at you and okay. they see. But because because that uh, that room exists, mm. that's why you make the application. 
you know that based on law, you can make that request. Now, unless the, is it uh, what the officer who is mm. writing this mm. thing or bringing this to fall, unless he has reason to suggest to us that those people don't have any skills at all. That, that, and that's what he said. He said, whatever they are applying, whatever retention they are applying for, mm. there are officers in the service now who can perform that. That does not even arise. Okay, because he is not an appointing authority, he doesn't have that power. Mm. The law says somebody should do that. He is not that person. Mm. Does he know what the person who is appointing or granting that contract is? Does he know who he's looking at? Mm. See, or what he's expecting. So if you don't have that power, okay, okay and the law exists for another person to do so, mm. please let's not do this. Okay. So for me, this does not arise. We have really telling issues to discuss. Let's not draw the so police. He has, he has no point. He I mentions, don't think so. He mentioned that it breaks the morale. It causes tension yeah. and it affects the security yeah. uh, output. Yeah. It, Do you know it, how many it, things? It means nothing to you. You know, you know how many things that breaks morale, morale by its law, so they continue to exist? Mm. A thousand and one things. Okay. You understand? So, okay. really, let's not belittle the law. And that's why I said, Amaliba, earlier that you are a lawyer. Okay. You have to be loyal to the law. Okay, thank you. See, doc, doc, let's 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 no, let, let Doc, let that. Doc. They are talking about the abuse of the law. Mm. It's not whether the law is there or it's not there. Mm. Well, it's the abuse it of the law. Take it to court. You okay. understand? You take it to okay. court. You don't Thank sit you. on radio, Doc, on TV. And be Doc, step, be step in for me. This is what the uh, former law. superintendent of police has said. He is worried watching from, from afar. And he will go on to mention uh, IGPs, a stream of them, JY Kofi, Nanfuri, and the rest who were all uh, appointed through, through such means. What do you say? Well, I think uh, there are two legs to this issue, and let me start by indicating that uh, when it comes to issues of police, even though I'm not a policeman, but I have a little bit of, I mean, a lively, good idea in mm. terms of the fact that my dad was a policeman. Okay. And he rose up to the position of assistant subtenant of police. Bar Barracks boy. Barracks boy. So <laughs> I understand, and I even know some of the names that he's mentioned. I think, mm. look, Johnny, mm. this issue it's not just about contracts. Mm. It's not about people being given contracts. Mm. When you talk about people being given contracts, uh, you tend to oversimplify the issue. Okay. In the sense that if you read the piece that was written by the superintendent, mm. it's a very, very interesting piece. And it's not something that started under this regime. Right. And that is, why, that, that is why I find it intriguing when it is viewed or debated within the spectrum of politics, who did that and what? Look, he gives a chronology of how things started. Mm. He makes the point that there have been instances where people's promotion have been stagnated mm. by virtue of the fact that they are not in the good books of the existing government. Right. He starts with uh, Kofi, mm. where Kofi was a junior. In fact, I happen to have grown up to know Kofi mm. in 1990. I know him. Kofi was promoted above what his peers. Mm. Then Nafuri mm. comes in, take over. Mm. In 1996, right. he stays in power to what 2000. 2000 right. And this period, we are talking of NDC regime. Mm -hmm. In 2001, uh, uh, Ozu Poku, right. very good friend of my dad, he happened to be at the uh, in charge of airport. Mm. Uh, as an airport uh, passports right. for a very very long time. He comes into power because a new government comes into power, right. a government that mm. sees him as one of them. So when people's promotions are stagnated intentionally for such a long period... He mentions Mills Robertson as well. That is mm. it. I mean, Osu mm. Siang, uh, what's his name, P.K. Champa and P. K. all those. Mm. So when people's promotions are stagnated, not by virtue of the fact that they are not qualified, mm. and they are left one year or six months for them to leave office, mm. Then their party comes into power. Mm. They have no option than to give them what? Contracts. Right. A typical example is Alassan. Mm. Remember Alassan? Alassan, yeah. yes. Under NBC. Exactly. Alassan was given, what do they call it? Contract. Mm. Kudalo. In was fact, given. Mr. Pietu himself. Pietu, so, so was that is 60 the system. when he was appointed. That is it. And this situation is not limited to the police service. Immediately you have an IGP who is on contract. What it means is that all the subordinates. They're stagnated, they're stagnated because it has to they, they, it's, it's like a revolver exactly. the, the top has to move but that is a system that we are operating the police system in this country is a political what institution is that the best it's not but the point that i'm trying to make is that we've lamented about this and that is why i find it quite intriguing that mr Alvi, 
who happens to be a subtenant mm -hmm. by virtue of when you enter into the police as an officer and mm -hmm. stuff. I think by two, uh, 1990, he should have been in the police service. Right. So from 1990 up to now, what did he say? Keep quiet. Well, recently, <laughs> ACP doctor Gozo had mentioned yeah, to us about the composition of the police council, yes. where they but, are, but the vice president he, when is he chairman. Finished, what happened? He left. Mm. He left. You think they don't know what is going on? So the point that I'm trying to make here is that this is not something new. This is not something. If we Should want to continue, no. Let me let me let me profess some recommendations. Mm. If we want to purge ourselves of this canker, which in fact is one that is affecting morale, mm. it is one that is affecting discipline, mm. then the police service must be depoliticized. Where, where, do we, where do we begin from? No, do we look might, at the there, constitution there can be, look, of the police council? Be, there can be so many avenues. For example, this. there can be so. Oh, Number one, people have recommended that, look, the IGP should not be, uh, what do they call it, uh, a political appointee. Mm. The police council, in fact, you made reference to this doctor. ACPR that, yes, mm. the police council should be one that, uh, I mean, should, should, should constitute people who are not, more or less, cannot be whipped, mm. or people who do not toe to the whims and caprices of what? A it can be done. Mm. But the truth of the matter is that this whole experience in the police service permeates the fabric of even universities in other other institutions mm. so it is it is a problem that do you remember recently the minister for education did make the argument that universities should stop contracts mm. do, do you remember i remember the right. auditor general mm. made a fuss about how many people have been appointed as contractors mm. at, at the at the university of ghana so it it happens almost everywhere but the manner in which it is done is where the problem is when people are refused promotions mm by virtue of the fact that they do not sing to the tune mm. of whoever is in charge, then it becomes problematic. So the person is made to mark time okay. for eight years as it's been happening now. Mm. For eight years. Mm. Stays at one position. Stays at one position. supposed to be moving at every four that years. That is it. Mm. For eight years. And his government comes into power. And everybody knows that this person is being handled this way by virtue of the fact that he does not belong to a political party. And he's left one or two years to go uh, on retirement, and his government can, they'll definitely give him the promotion, and they'll give him the contract. Huh. Amal, what will change if, if the NDC comes to power? You, you would you know, what, Amal, what will change? This is the matter. This is the problem we have. Uh, the composition of the police council, attorney general is there, political appointee, vice president is chairman, political appointee. There are other appointees who are also political motivated. The minister for interior is uh, there. Minister <laughs> interior is there. Now, eventually, when they make a recommendation, it goes to the council of state, and we do know how also the council of state comes about. What would change under the NDC if you come? But up? you see, it's like we are missing the point of this retired um, uh, police officer's point. What he's saying is that. That provision is there, mm. but it is being abused. And he's talking about nine or ten who are applying to stay. Six more. Six more. Three uh, are currently. Uh -huh, are applying to stay. That is the worrying phenomenon. You know, it's now becoming rampant. Mm. But, but, but then if you, if you apply, and for example, the police council doesn't approve it, the council of state doesn't approve it, you don't get it. So that's what I'm saying. So if the police council pays composition, is politically tainted the council of state as well you know how do you detach the two and make sure this uh, police regulation works it is for us to obey the law what the law has been put in there for what is the intent of the framers of that law the man is saying that people whose skills are common in the police service want to stay and they are being granted the opportunity to stay let's focus on that what Nanado is doing now doesn't mean President Akufado uh, uh, Mahama will do in future. It started in 2012. Uh, no, no, no. It means that it transcends. No, no, you don't understand. I understand. For instance, for instance, let's take um, Alassan. Okay. Alassan was retained because he had come from the UN with the police visibility. Uh, 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 community policing. Community policing and police visibility. Mm. He had just started it and he got to retirement. So they said that they wanted him to be there to finish with that program. So if you use the law sparingly in this way, mm -hmm. I don't think he will come out to write this. But if you have a situation where people... Was Kudalo not retired? Kudalo. I don't know about that. Yes, he was. Uh, Kudalo was uh, John Kudalo was on retirement. You see, you are limiting... I am not limiting this to the <laughs> IGP. <laughs> 
the man is talked about commissioners on contracts. It's the man is talking about contracts, commissioners. Right. And I'm saying that commissioners can become IGPs. Yes. So the answer to this question directly is to stay within the law. That is what will change under that. That was what will change. Okay. To stay within the law. Okay. And then ensure that the purpose for which the law was put in place is what would would ride over any other consideration. Okay. Richard, what yeah. will change? Well, uh, what will change, I think, is nothing. The law is as what it is. If we want something to change, let's change the law. But until and unless the law is changed, there can't be anything to be expected the, to be the, different. The law has been abused. Now, no, it's not being abused. You see, and that's the problem. If the law is being abused, and I am able to measure that the law is being abused, then I take it to court. So the officer who feels that the law is being abused, the court place is there. There is no this institutional is not... corrective measure. Ah, it's, it's must, the law. must we always end up in court? Yes, because there are no it, gatekeepers. But you see, who must enforce the law? Johnny, it's the law at source. The only gatekeeper is the court. You understand? The only gatekeeper is the court. You and I. This is not a discussion for the studio. Ultimately, we can have our discussions here, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's a law. Mm. Now you see. Uh, is it in uh, 20, 20, uh, 2008? Mm. Mm? Mm. You have Nanado Dango Gufado wins the popular vote. But because it's law, he hasn't, he didn't get 50 plus one, mm. we have to go back to second round. It's the law. My motion as a party my, a person is disturbed. And ultimately, the NDC uh, President Mills, uh, may so rest in peace, wins the election. I am emotional. I don't like it. I wanted us to have won it because mm -hmm. we want the popular vote to begin with. Mm -hmm. But then the law says you have to get 50 plus one. So we went back and they won. Okay. Where is the emotion? It's the law. Okay. So please, if these uh, officers are retired and mm -hmm. other people are interested, they should go to court challenge the law. Let's work on changing the law. We have parliament. We have my brother Malaba, who has come back to be loyal at this point to the law, his position uh, recently, I understand, to be consistent. So let's do that. This discussion, we need to be guided okay. that there is a law that mm -hmm. permits granting of that contract. If that law remains and the contracts are being granted, then it's consistent with law. Okay. We have chosen to okay. go the way of law Thank and you. we must leave the way Great. of law. Johnny, Doc. are you aware that uh, uh, within the police service, I think from the position of ACP, right, DCUP, mm. CUP, mm. you need, uh, I think, some form of presidential it, approval. It is. Same with the army, from Kennel upwards. That is it. Mm. So, if you have a president that, excuse me to say, do not see you as one who is uh, favorable to his cause or mm. buy into his vision, do you think you are going to be promoted? No. After chief superintendent, mm. you are between the president and, and your promotion. It. That is it. So, this whole thing, for me, it's not just about. Our shelters have been saying that Bibi and Koka Papa, Papa and the brother. The reason why people are going in for contracts is because at a point in time they were short chained. So if the short chaining is what mm. is erased, mm. and there's fairness, there's impartiality, and competence is the benchmark of what promotion. Right. I think. By the time you get to 60, why, why, why wouldn't you? I, I grew you've, up in a, you've, you've gone through I, the I grew up in a the barracks man. too, and for every four years, there's promotion if you have delivered Johnny, well on the For eight years, mm. you are not promoted. Meanwhile, in two years, somebody's promoted from ACP to DCUP to COP. Two years. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aisha Kubo is here with your here? messages. Uh, you uh, Ghana. Well, I think that uh, <laughs> the superintendent mentioned it in, in the story somewhere. But, Aisha, welcome. Thank you, Johnny. What let's are the, the people saying? One. Yes, let's take the first one from Rex Ford Nyako. He says, the CID boss must be fired if she won't resign. She was not <laughs> obliged to call that press conference. She misled the families, Ghanaians, and the whole world. So highly unprofessional. She should just have apologized instead of admitting she deliberately misled everyone. She could further have put the lives of the victims in danger with her insistence that they knew their whereabouts. Um... Good morning. Richard doesn't believe in one aiming higher in his or her chosen profession. Sad. It's coming from IB. Uh, good morning to you all at TV3 and I want to contribute to the program. I'm not surprised because uh, she said she won't resign, my brothers. She was appointed by the president and so if the president is telling us she's not aware 
he is not so aware of what is happening, then it's very serious. The, this is the reason why president should stop appointing people, especially his family and friends, because it is not helping us in the country. Thank you. It's coming from Raymond from Somania. Uh, he sent that one to us. Um, A.U. Farouk from Tamale says, good morning. In fact, the statements made by the CID boss is ridiculous and disrespectful. Calling for her resignation is due to her incompetence and failure to the tax. Uh, good morning, Johnny. Sometimes if people are making submissions which are not true, why do you allow them to continue? Richard seems so rude in his submissions. Meanwhile, all that he's saying doesn't uh, make sense. The contract business yeah, is me. wrong. Besides, we all go to school or join any organization to make it to the top. And I sent that one from Ho. Uh, Gariba from Tamale says, uh, good morning. Former President Mahama said in uh, UCC in 2016 that the free senior high school by the NPP is a political gimmick. As for NDC party, they are against the free SHS. Um, um, the free senior high school by the NPP is a political gimmick, yes. A Ghanaian should not make a terrible mistake to bring the NDC back to power, else NDC will cancel the free senior high school. Good morning, please. Is the CID boss having children? If she is, then uh, she's selfish because uh, if she can't feel the pains of her fellow women, then hmm, uh, in this case, uh, she must resign. She can't get the opportunity to deceive Ghanaians again about the tardy missing girls. Johnny, I, greet, I greeted someone today and asked how, how are the responses. And the response was like, PDS confusion, Ayabasa, let's change this. It is bad, come 2020. So Johnny, those are some of the messages. Ah, okay, all right, and uh, well, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Jinapo. Grateful no. for your time, most, most grateful. And uh, Richard Ayaba of the NPP, most grateful for your time. Ibrahim Amaleba, thank you very much as a lawyer as well. And